So, in this lesson we're going to talk about structures because that is something that is huge in reverse engineering. You, you have to understand structures and pointers and you, you be able to use Ghidra, especially the data type manager, to create structures. And like in last episode, I chose one of the exploit education um, binaries just because it was very simple and it's something that people might be interested in. It's very simple code and we'll just use that to quickly disassemble because once you understand how to do structures and pointers um, you can really start to get get to work on basically everything and maybe in another episode we'll start actually reverse engineering some obfuscated, I can't say that word, code from an actual product. So anyway, um, save time. I'm not going to show you how to create a project and import files. You already know how to do that if you watch my previous videos I've already showed you twice. Um, so what I've done here is I've grabbed again the exploit education website. They have the Phoenix virtual machine and this time I'm doing heap number one. So let's start with the function main. So I've already put main in the filter here. Oops, put it again. And double click on that. And what do we have? So um, we know that main, when it takes arguments, it's going to always take the argument. Um, oops. The first argument is going to be, and I'm hitting the wrong characters, the argument count number of arguments passed in the command line and then the second argument is going to be it's called argv it's a car pointer pointer so it's a basically an array of character pointers that actually describe the arguments the one for each argument that not describe but that are the arguments and then this is an int okay oops that's not what I wanted to do I'll do that All right, so now what do we have? We have some variables defined here, undefined for star pu var, void star pu var 2, undefined for star pu var 3. So one of the first things I like to do when reverse engineering something is I look for the functions that I know about and then examine the arguments. So malloc, we know, if you, well if you don't know, malloc takes a size which is the first argument and the only argument and allocates some new space in the computer's memory of that many bytes and then it returns a pointer okay so we have malloc 16 bytes and it's assigned this pointer pu var 1 so I always like to when I'm doing something in, add as much context as I can into the reverse engineering when I'm while I'm doing it. So as soon as I know something about anything, I like to give it somehow add that into the label somehow. So um, I don't know any what this program is going to do with this yet, but I know this PU bar is a pointer to 16 bytes. So I'm just going to call it that. All right. And then the next statement it says um, the value at the place it just allocated so that storage that memory that it just allocated the first byte in that is going to be or not the first byte but um, it's going to try to assign to that to store in that that memory the value one and that's already of interest to me because an integer is usually four bytes or eight bytes but we've allocated 16 bytes, so we know that's probably actually not um, just a single item. That's actually a structure, and what's happening here is it's actually writing the first part of that structure, um, the value 1. So the first part of that structure is an integer. Okay. Um, then there's another malloc, size 8 here, so I'm going to label that pointer to eight bytes okay and then you see some weird pointer arithmetic here not weird but um, this 
this indicates that it's there's some type of structure um, field assignment happening here. Okay, so at this point we can go ahead and look at the structure editor in, or I'm sorry, the data type manager in um, Ghidra. And we know this is a pointer. We know this is a pointer to a structure because it's 16 bytes. There's nothing, unless it was just a, like say, an array or a, a, a character string. Um, nothing's going to be 16 bytes. Especially we know that being that it's assigning an integer to the first part, there's no integer that's 16 bytes. So I know this is a, in, um, this is a, a, a structure pointer. So I'm going to right click and choose auto create structure and Ghidra will actually try to figure out um, every all the field assignments and, and how big they are and all that for this structure. So it did that. It said it created something called an A-struct. Um, it just names them A-struct like 1, A-struct 2, A-struct 3, so forth and so on. And um, it, it assigned, it, dis, it made this pointer a pointer to an A-struct. And if I go into data type manager here, I can type a struct, double click on it, and it shows me here, it knows it's 16 bytes, and it has filled out what it knows of. And it's actually made a mistake here. Um, but if we look at here, the first thing it does is, after allocating, is it assigns the first, the beginning of the structure, the, the memory at the beginning of the structure, the value one. And if we look at the assignment here, we click on this, um, we he see here in the disassembly, it's um, going to, here it is, move D word pointer, move the, the value one into um, field zero of whatever this this pointer points to and it's a D word double word so that is double word is what 32 bytes yeah quad word is yeah so it's um, four bytes representing the value one so we know this this first component of the structure is four bytes and it is and Ghidra already got that so that's great so we'll just I'm just gonna put that into there and I'm going to put um, small number because it assigned the value one there and I'm gonna save it okay and as as I go through I'm gonna try to usually this this code is very small but as if there was a lot more code um, as things reference the same structure in different ways it would give us more context okay and then we have pointer to eight bytes okay and then what we see here this field eight in this um, a struct is going to um, point to this 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 data that was um, allocated in the step above. So let's go to the structure editor, and here Ghidra got it wrong. It thinks for some reason it thinks a car pointer is four bytes. We're gonna have to fix that because it's not on this on on an AMD or on 64-bit Intel any pointer is going to be 8 bytes. So I'm just going to go back here and find, see it has different car pointers. I'm going to find one that says 8. So the first one says 4, the second one says 8. So this is the one. We're going to make it 8 bytes there. The return, it's got that. Good. Okay. And then we're going to just say, we're going to give it a name, PTR to 8 bytes. Save it. And then, so we, we see this code here. Um, it creates a structure, or yeah, it allocates a space for the structure, an uh, an instance of the structure. Then the first field, which is a four byte integer, it assigns a number one. Then it allocates eight more bytes and assigns the eighth field, or the uh, uh, the the field at eight bytes offset to there. And then it goes and it creates another, allocates another 16 bytes, then sets the first field to 2. So this is telling me that this is probably the same exact, um, based on the pattern, it's probably the exact, same exact structure. So we're going to have tell PUVAR that um, it's actually an A struct pointer 2. Okay. 
Okay, and then it, you can see it automatically fills in these fields. The, the assignment here is small number is two. And look at that, the first one, the first structure here gets a value one. The second structure gets a value two. This is probably some type of counter. So I'm gonna, just gonna change that field from small number to probably, now I'm just gonna put counter. And since I'm not 100% sure it's a counter, I'm gonna put three question marks. Um, when I when I as I add data, um, sometimes I think it's better to add something even if you're wrong or not unsure. But um, if you're not sure what something, just put some question marks so you know that you know you're not exactly sure. You think that this is what the thing is, but it, you could be wrong. And I put actually uh, multiple question marks if I if I'm pretty sure, but I'm not 100 percent. I'll put one question mark. As the more unsure I am, I put more question marks. So I usually do one through three. All right. Um, and then we get, said we see the same pattern, then we're going to malloc 8 bytes, pointer to 8 bytes, and then we're going to store that in that other field of a struct. So we have two structures, and um, look at this, we don't ever use the rest of this, these four bytes. So what that, this probably intends is that this, this value is actually intended to store 64 bytes, or it also could be because when a compiler makes structures, it will pad things to um, to make the fields align such that the accesses the CPU when it goes to access the different fields, it it has aligned boundaries. So I'm going to actually just call this a int 64 because um, it's it's either a 64-bit integer or it's um, a four-byte integer. I'm sorry, it's either a eight-byte integer or it's a four-byte integer with four bytes of padding. Either way, um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna assume it's um, an eight byte integer. Okay, so we see this structure a struct is actually um, a small integer like a counter and then a pointer to some data. Okay, so and let's change this um, pointer to 16 bytes. We now we now have some more contacts. So we're just gonna call this. I'm gonna rename this actually the structure from um, a struct to my struct. Um, Save it, and then we'll. Oops, yeah, and then I'm going to rename the actual pointer to pointer to my struct one, and then the second one is going to be pointer to my struct two. Great, and oh. Undefined for. I thought I set that counter to an integer type. I guess I didn't. Oh, and Ghidra's saying that no, it knows though that the assignment was four bytes, so it wants it to be a four byte um, um, integer. All right, fine. We'll set that. to a regular int. And then Ghidra will stop complaining. All right. All right, and then so we have, we create a structure, we fill out the first field to one, then we um, allocate some more space for eight bytes of storage, and then the second field in our structure we, we set to that new memory, and then we do it again for a second structure. And then what do we do? We string copy, and string copy takes a destination buffer or pointer um, is the first argument and the second argument is the source and it's going to copy the source data string an ASCII string to the destination so what is this code doing? Um, b1 is the first argument that we put on the command line and it's going to be stored into here into the structure and then the second one is going to be stored Second argument is going to be stored into the second um, the second structure's argument. Um, um, I'm sorry, not argument, but um, um, second field. Um, so we now know what this is doing. This is actually just making two items, two structures, and copying the command line arguments in one into each structure. So we're gonna we now know what this um, field is. It's a um, copy of argument. 
All right, and then it prints. That's a wrap, folks, and returns. So that's all it does. We reverse engineered this program that um, that is very simple. It creates two structures and then copies your two command line arguments into each structure. Okay, and each each structure has an integer um, counter or or something. Um, it's a small integer, and then the the actual command line argument. Okay. Now let's see because the exploit exercises actually gives you the code. Let's see if we're close. So I'm going to go to exploit exercises in. Uh, Or exploit education. It used to be called exploit exercises. Phoenix stack. No, it was heap one. And look at their code. Let's look at the code. So um, they have a structure. They call it heap structure. It's got a small integer priority and then a car pointer name. Look at that. That's um, exactly what we came up with. Where is my? Where did it go? Oh, structure. Where my structure editor go? Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. So we see the structure we came up with is an integer and a car pointer. And yep, it looks like in this case, this was actually these four bytes. We'll just call them undefined four. And they were just padding that the compiler, that it's not actually used for anything. Or we can call it, yeah, let's call it padding for alignment. Okay, but it's not actually used for anything. So we correctly reverse engineered the structure. And then let's see the code. We have a struct heap struct pointer one and two. We have a, we called it a my struct pointer one and two. We have code that says create the struct, allocate the structure, set the first field, the it was called the priority. We called it a, a counter. All right, so that's what their purpose was, but there really was no other context. But yeah, it's a small integer. Set it to one, name malloc8. Um, it's going to malloc the memory. Then the same thing for the second, and then it just copies it in there, and then prints out, copies the uh, command line arguments, and prints out that's a wrap, folks. So there you go. You just reverse engineer a small program that uh, used structures and pointers. And we did it correctly. and um, was very easy to do. Now um, you'll notice that this code actually has some other code that was never actually referenced winner because it's the exploit exercises or ex exploit education they're actually trying to show you um, the bug in this program that could be exploitable um, or that's the purpose of this is to show you how some things could be exploited um, because what you have end up having here is the structure we know is only eight bytes. This or not structure. This allocation is only eight bytes, and you actually could overwrite. You can do what's called a heap overwrite because if our command line arguments are more than eight bytes, you're going to have an overwrite. So. Um, there you go. That's not the purpose of this. This instruction is to is not supposed to be showing you how to exploit things, just how to reverse engineer. But there you go.